what's up everybody happy whiskey wednesday night hump day that's right i said it hump day <laughs> what's up everybody welcome to the master drum whiskey room i am jason c and tonight we're gonna have ourselves a night we're gonna have uh, a whole shit ton of samples to, to taste through that a lot of you guys out there have sent me that i haven't gotten a chance to so i figured why not go through them live with you guys? I'll I can get my honest, uh, you know, quick thoughts about some of these bourbons and and rye's and uh, a couple of crazy hard to find ones that will be mixed in there too, including the Van Winkle thirteen year rye's in here too. I mean, holy shit, we're gonna drink some epic whiskey tonight. Uh, also, um, tonight's big giveaway. Uh, I've been very lucky to get a couple bottles of these, so I figured, you know, I don't need three of these, so I'm going to give away one of them. So this is the Stag Junior Batch 15, uh, coming in at a hearty 131.1 proof. So this is going to be the giveaway tonight, guys. Uh, any super chat that comes through, you guys get entered. Any of the mods out there, I need you guys to help out and uh, get, um, you know, keep track of all these names. I'm hoping to get a lot of entries for this because I, I know this is a, a hard to find bottle for a lot of people. So hoping that someone out there that does not have this bottle or hasn't ever gotten a bottle of Stag Jr. wins this tonight. So we'll see how it goes. So good luck to all you tonight. Uh, let me say hi to the check the tat 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 tat. That's right. Uh, Gary Franchi, darn it. I want that Stag Jr. Batch 15. <laughs> So I think I saw B Sims. Uh, he also threw a super chat in earlier on. So between B Sims and everybody else, thank you so much. Uh, let's see. Um, let's go. Let's get down. What's up, Mother Trickers? Whiskey Nose is here. What's up, man? Nick uh, Promen's in the house. What's up? Uh, let's see. M and D Wednesday nights. That's right. Yeah, great giveaway. Yeah, I figured why not, guys. You know, we're still on 14 here, says Bourbon Noob. Uh, Whiskey Nose just came in. Hello from Marty and Jenny. Everyone, go check out Whiskey Nose. Very cool channel, a newer channel. Ron Miles, Michael Klein is going to enter for the Batch 15 from 30 burner accounts. Yeah, probably, Ron. <laughs> uh, Rob, I've never had any of them unicorn in my neck of the woods. Uh Juice Journey Bry, cheers from Southern Louisiana. What's up, Juice Journey? Uh, Kenneth Connor says, like your presentations. Appreciate that, man. Love the show, says John, JG, 877 Mash Now. Man, everyone is dropping in crazy super chats. Uh, Barrel Lover, haven't been on in a while, looking for a great, uh, looking for a job and got one. Awesome, Barrel Lover, that's cool. Love the Jackie Z interview recently. Yeah, how can you not love Jackie Zykin? Honestly, she's amazing. Mr. Whiskey Shits, holy shit. He says, cheers, give me that stag. Damn, that's the way to that's one way to go about and get it. Damn. Thank you so much. Mark Bond, Brandon Harper for the stag. Uh thank you guys so much. John Hurst, keep up the great work. Love the show. Maureen Franchi, I want that Strag Meyer that then Gary. I want that, I want that stag more than Gary does. <laughs> the better half is coming out. <laughs> Love it. RV batch 15 is so good. Yes, it is, man. It is so damn good. Um, Thunder Dan, what's up, man? Let's get this party started. Uh, oh, stag junior says James Webster. I live in Whiskey Desert and have never seen a stag junior person. I need to win it, says Texas Taterbait. Well, good luck, buddy. Good luck to everybody tonight. Uh, let's see. Oh, Black Bourbon Family's in the house. What's up? That's Jason and Brandy. If you guys haven't checked out Black Bourbon Family yet, I love those. They just did. They just did a really like fun uh, blind uh, kind of like a March Madness uh, bracket uh, tasting. I'm not gonna tell you who won it because it's really entertaining. But oh my god, it was. It's really Jason and Brandy are great. They're gonna be on the channel hopefully soon. Uh, I think what I want to do is send them a blind tasting. Uh, to do live on the channel. We could talk bourbon. I'm curious to know their story. So cheers. Cheers, guys. Thanks for hopping in tonight. Amy Bohm, the legend is here. Josh Pence, Andrew Stewart, Christopher M. Uh, give me that stag. <laughs> Had to 4 a.m. Tater Camp in Columbus a few weeks back to get a stag junior 15. Would not mind a second. 
Yeah, that's what happens a lot. The 4 a.m. tater camp in uh, in Columbus. That's a real thing. It happens a lot. Uh, need it in the beach. There you go, Fritz. And East 78-210 comes in. Stag Jr., batch 15, please. Absolutely. Um, so, so while you guys... Hopefully we have somebody in the chat. Some of the uh, the mods are keeping track of the uh, the the names here because they're rolling through fast. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, Lisa Grimm really wanting some Stag Junior. No batch 15. Let's do this, Jason. Cheers. RVA whiskey, absolutely. Um, so I also want to give a big shout out to. It's always fun when new channels go live for the first time. Uh, whiskey Mountains. Uh, Adriana went live for the first time before my channel. And I got to tell you the support of the community for her to have about, I think it was uh, 60 something people to support her, to watch for her first live stream. It's very nerve wracking when you, when you do your first live stream. So I just want to give a big shout out to, uh, to Adriana. I think it was really great. She did a fantastic job sipping through some great bourbons. Everybody go check out, uh, whiskey mountains and Adriana. Uh, amazing whiskey reviews uh, from these picturesque views out in Utah. It's pretty amazing. And you also kind of get to learn the difference between, you know, what comes, uh, you know, drinking a bourbon outside versus inside. It does make a big difference. So she kind of gets into that. She's a, she's a, she's very smart. So <laughs> listen to her. <laughs> uh, I got to get my hands on batch 15. Cheers. You guys are awesome. Love it. Um, let's see. Good luck to all for all the stack juniors tonight, Jason. Thanks for putting up the freebie. Absolutely, guys. My pleasure. Uh, sugar kitty in the house. I can feel some antlers in my future. Absolutely. Actually, let me, uh, let me throw this up real quick before I forget. There we go. Now we're, now we're feeling like a real live show here, guys. <laughs> I'm starting the night off with something a little low proof, but you know, I miss Elmer. I, I don't, I don't drink. It's, it's because I, I don't, you know, I never see a bottle of this anytime, anywhere, wherever I go. And if I do see it, it's usually jacked up in price. Um, so I nurse this bottle so, so slowly. Just I do not sip on it very often. But I feel like before we get into all these, you know, samples tonight, you know, it's a nice, it's a nice starter. It's a 90 proof, good flavor, nice sweet Buffalo Trace opener. Cheers, guys. Thanks for hanging out tonight. Mm. Fair warning. If I win, I'm going to mix it with Walmart brand Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Nate, I don't think you have to. It already has a little bit of a Dr. Peppery taste. The only thing better than finding Stack Jr. is getting one for free from a great whiskey tuber. Absolutely, William. Thank you so much, man. Will Hendo's in the house. Yes. Jason Coates is here. Sup? Uh, yeah, we saw Sugar Kitty, Whiskey Nose, all you guys coming in. Jerry Black, somebody say Stag Jr. Yes, we did, buddy. Cohen's in the house. What's up, man? Ed Pulsifer, never had Stag Jr. Let's change that. Absolutely, Ed. Good luck, buddy. Um, Jason C. Making bourbon, finding great again. <laughs> ah, shit. I love that. Um, we got some of our mods in the house tonight. Cheech Artelino, thanks so much. I hope, I hope you and Jen are doing great tonight. Awesome. Uh... I would love that bottle of stag. Absolutely. So uh, a couple of cool announcements, guys, before we get into the, uh, the all the tastings tonight. So, I mean, you've, you've heard me talk about it before, the Mash and Journey Whiskey Club. That's our collaborative uh, whiskey pick club with uh, Scott from, the, uh, from my bourbon journey. Uh, we just got a uh, word that we're, we're going to have something really unique and something pretty amazing coming to our Patreon members. So if you guys are thinking about becoming a Patreon, there's a lot of different tiers if you want to support the support the channel. Uh, but now I'll, I'll give Scott the credit on this. You know, Scott has cultivated a great relationship with the guys at um, at uh, Four Gate, uh, Bob D'Antoni, uh, and Bill Straub. So basically, what we're going to be doing is we we partnered with them to do a barrel pick from Fourgate. So if you guys don't know who Fourgate is, uh, this is one of their labels. This is their Ruby Rye Spring. This is their yeah Ruby Rye Springs uh, release. This was a um, 
I reviewed this. This is their batch number 11. This was a straight rye whiskey, which was seven years old, and then it was matured for 42 days in a ruby port rum cask. Uh, I described it as um, uh, Midwinter's Night's Dram on steroids, and it really is. So, so because of that relationship, they have some amazing barrels that they've uh, that they've gotten through the years. Um, you know, they're they're not that new of a whiskey brand, but we are going to be picking, or we have a barrel pick coming of a four gate. Now, the special part about this is that. And I'll show you the label right now, guys. Here's the label. So this is the Four Gate Whiskey Company. This is going to be our pick. Now, I can give you some more uh, details right here. This is, um, it's going to be barrel number 20, approximately 114 proof, non-chill filtered, barrel proof, eight-year MGP rye that's going to be finished in a Kelvin Cooperage toasted barrel for about 30 days. So we're talking about an eight-year NGP toasted rye that Scott and I are going to be able to bring to you to the community for, for any of our Patreon supporters. And if there are any barrels, uh, any bottles left, we'll open it up to the masses. Um, you know, these are going to be pricey. Uh, you know, everything from four gate kind of is in that $200 range. But at the same time, we could not pass up getting the, this pick, you know, to bring to you guys. Uh, along with the pick... You guys will get um, this little laser etched uh, white oak tag. Uh, it'll have Mash and Journey on there. It'll say barrel number 20. The barrel, they have all that cool stuff. So that tag will come wrapped around the bottle uh, for you guys, whoever orders one. Um, actually, in here, the samples, uh, Bob is kind of wrapping them up right now. So he's going to send them our way. So we're going to get to try the these the eight year MGP distillate, and then we're going to try it with that toast on it to see what it's going to taste like. So uh, we're going to kind of taste through them and see how it goes, and we are looking very very forward to it. So if you're uh, you know if you're sitting becoming a Patreon, you know this, it's a good time to do it. We have our Russell's Reserve pick coming out uh, about May as well. That four gate will be coming out around the end of May, uh, and then as we go down the line, we have our two Woodenville picks in July. Uh, and then towards, uh, as we get to fall, uh, our Luxro picks, the Rebel, the Ezra pick will be coming out. We have a Bullet pick coming out too at some point. And, um, you know, we're not sure if we're going to do a ton more with that since it's our first year, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, but, you know, we're just, like we always say, we're just trying to bring you guys something different and unique to the table. So I'm very excited about that. So let's go back to the comments here. <clears throat> Bourbon Noob says, I need that pick. <laughs> Give the stack junior 15 to someone else. If I want, I want the Elmer T. Lee. <laughs> you want the rest of this? You want the rest of my Elmer? <clears throat> uh, let's see here. What else we got going on? Uh, Brian Brennicke's in the house. That four gate T's got my attention. Can't wait. <laughs> Just need it shipped to Tennessee. <clears throat> Adam Nate. So that pick will be through sealbox.com. Uh, so sealbox, you know, there's, we'll be able to get it to a lot more states than might be listed, you know, so we'll, we'll work through that as the pick gets closer. So no worries guys. And, you know, you guys have a good, you know, community here within the chat. So you guys, I think will be able to help each other out if you can't get, you know, bottles, you know, here and there. So um, I know you guys are, are good at doing that. Uh, Whiskey Mouse, thanks so much. Just recorded all those do donations. Holy cow. Oh, thanks, Adriana. See, that's why she's awesome. Uh, Jason Wickland said, finally found a rare breed rye while in Florida this week. Great stuff. Absolutely. Heather Keller, newbie here, would love to win that Amaze Balls bottle. Yes, Heather. <laughs> yeah, the, the label is going to be really cool. And the, the neck tag, you know, one thing that Fourgate is, I mean, they're pretty first class with everything they do, the experience. We're going to have our own customized label, all that stuff. It'd be a great, you know, not only a collector's item for each and every one of you that get a bottle, but uh, just a great, uh, just, you know, an amazing experience to be able to have an eight-year MGP rye that's toasted like that. So from Kelvin Cooperage, which is one of the best Cooperages in the, on the planet. So uh, let's see here. Let me go back down. Just say hi to everybody. We got I Whiskey She Wines in the house, Bobby and Sam. What's up, guys? Miss you guys so much. I hope we get to hang soon. I Whiskey She Wines, let's do something soon down in Kentucky. Let's meet up. Let's do something. I miss you guys. 
I, I gotta I gotta go and see their uh, I gotta go to their house and check out their uh, their speakeasy that they have, which is where they're filming all their all their uh, their videos right now, which is awesome. Uh, hey, Tammy Brennicky is here too. What's up, Tammy? Will Sparks in the house? Would jump on a chance to grab one of those bottles. How do you like the ETL to Blends? I like ETL better than than Blends. You know, usually, just because I don't know. Uh, you know, and I've said this before that there's something about Elmer T. Lee to me that just I don't know. It it just there's something to it. It has a little bit more depth of flavor than I'm used to with Blends. Blends is usually very sweet and really good and very smooth, uh, or it's kind of like flat, which is why you know I tend to stay away from them. Elmer T. Lee, every time I've had one, has always been good, rounded in flavor. Yes, it's sweet. It doesn't have a super long finish, but I feel like it's got a better finish than most of the Blantons that I've had. So I think that's where it wins out for me. Uh, whiskey Nose, thanks for the Whiskey Nose plug. What's the status on your Chattanooga Whiskey Weekend? I'm going to be talking with them, uh, I think, by the end of this week. Uh, hopefully, we can make something happen, guys. It would probably be in the fall time. Hopefully when, you know, most people have their vaccines and that's a little bit safer, you know, we'll see if we can make that happen. So absolutely. Uh, let's see. Hey, Justin, we will totally set up a time for you to come down and party in the speakeasy. Hell yeah, I'm down. What's the most y'all would pay for Elmy T. Lee? So I know that's a good question. Anybody want to answer that for uh, Mr. Brooklyn, Brooklyn 456? Brewbaker Makers in the house. Uh I must have a flat bottle. I'm not impressed with Blanton's. Yeah, I mean, so uh, primetime Michael Klein, you know, he brought his, you know, stellar bottle of Blanton's over, and it was really good. You know, I think the key that I'm finding with Blanton's is the lower the Rick, the sweeter and better they are. If that makes sense. The ones I've had in the higher Ricks have not been great. And remember now, Blanton's went from like an eight-year, nine-year-old bourbon down to six years now. I mean, six years old. I mean, okay, <laughs> I can buy a Russell's 10-year from Wild Turkey any day of the week for 35 bucks. I'm just saying. And it's the, you know, it's about the same proof. I mean, why am I, why am I struggling for the horsey bottle? I'm just going to buy a 10-year Russell's. I'm just saying. Uh, Landon Nimmer, cheers, Jason. Cheers to April. Absolutely. Um, Always take the Rock Hill over Elmer if possible. Yeah, see, I'm not a huge fan of Rock Hill. Something about Rock Hill doesn't, I don't know. Maybe I just haven't, I mean, Rock Hill, well, Rock Hill is a single barrel too. So maybe my single barrel isn't all that great. But Rock Hill just, it's great. I mean, it, it's sweet. It's got a nice spice to it, which I like because of that higher proof being 100 proof. But um I've only really ever had one or two. You know, that's one of those bottles, again, you don't see often. But if anyone has, like, a really good Rock Hill that they have, like a single barrel, send it my way. I'll be glad to trade samples with you if you want. Um, I would love to try a really good Rock Hill. The two that I've had have been really good, but nothing that would make me change my mind from reaching for the Elmer first. Um, let's see. Whiskey Mounds is still having that knob creek. Says so good. Uh, totally agree. The master and drum. Who cares about the horsey? A lot of people care about the horsey. A lot of people care about the horsey. <laughs> uh, we got some new drumline members jumping in. This is awesome, guys. Thank you so much. Um, I done a, the strolling troll. Said I done a blind of Bland's Old Fitz, Larceny, Elmer, and Rock Hill Farms. Elmer came in last. Rock Hill won it for me. Wow, interesting. I could see the old fits and larceny not see, but I think lar I think uh, I think proof really plays a role in there because you know Rock Hill Rock Hill at that hundred proof it really makes a big difference compared to Blanton's and to Elmer Tilly. Remember Elmer Tilly is only ninety proof. You know even Blanton's is a uh, you know three proof points higher than this one, so. Uh, let's see. Anybody else hanging out? Jason, take a damn drink. Yes, I'm, I'm going to drink some more. All right. I'm going to about to start my sample uh, my sample, my sample uh, shootout here and see, uh, check out these different, these different samples that you guys sent out to me. So, oh, damn, that's good. 
I love me, my Omer. All right. While people are breaking down extra blends, I'll take the Bowman small batch or single barrel any day of the week. Yeah, I mean, we talked about that, how good the Bowman stuff is. Uh, Ethan Friedman, totally agreed on the Russells. Go to it often as rare breed. It's surprisingly hard to find in my hood. Yeah, rare breed, I, you know, we talked about that with uh, with David Jennings, how some, like, rare breed is getting a little bit harder to find, unfortunately. Ricky Bobby, that stag bottle be uh, perfect next to my velvet painting of whale and dolphin getting it on. <laughs> Shit. Just for that, I kind of hope Ricky Bobby wins because I want a picture of that. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, oh, my God. That's awesome. All right. All right, guys. So let's see here. What do we have? So I got a lot of samples, a lot of samples here, a ton of samples. Uh, I think I think I'm going to start with these two right here, which is um, – I got to thank Caitlin Brubaker, one of my patrons, for sending these along or giving these to me. We met at uh, a couple weekends ago down at Bartstown Bourbon Company. I have yet to try these. These are the Castle and Key Restoration Rye. So we're going to – I have batch one and batch two. Uh, she was kind enough to uh, to share. So let's try these. So Castle and Key, if you guys don't know already, that's the uh, – that's the newly renovated distillery that used to be the old Taylor distillery. You know, the legendary Colonel Taylor set up shop, the old Taylor distillery. Uh, once it closed down, Castle and Key moved in, resurrected it. It's one of the most beautiful distilleries you can visit on the trail. It really, really is. I can't say enough about it. Um, I mean, if you're a history nerd like I am, to kind of walk the, the warehouses where Colonel Taylor was and the grounds and all that, it's incredible. It's incredible. So Castle and Key Restoration Rye Batch 1, 99 proof, three years old. Castle and Key Restoration Rye Batch 2, 99 proof, three years old as well. So uh, apparently there are pretty big differences here uh, with between the batches. So we're going to try these through first. I, I haven't seen a bottle of this yet. The bottles are pretty cool. If you guys haven't seen the bottles yet, I will throw the picture up here. This is what they look like. So that is the Restoration Rye. Um, looks really cool. I don't know if that's the single barrel or not with that special little tag on it, but Castle and Key, they, they, they designed a beautiful bottle. I, I gotta say, I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous. I love it. It's got like a, um, like if you guys know compass box, it's got like this very compass box feel to it, uh, which, which I love. I think, uh, if their bourbon comes out with a similar design, I mean, I think people are going to go crazy for that bottle and bond bourbon no matter what, which should be ready next year. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. But right now, they got a rye ready. They got a three-year-old rye, so let's let's give it a go. I'll try to keep track of the chat here the, the best I can, guys. Um, uh, oh, Rossman Tarver. I think I missed that. Peep that chat, Nuga Whiskey, Tony Bow behind you, I think. Thoughts? I got mine from my local store the other day. I'm excited to try. I'll crack that open, Rossman. I'll, I'll taste through that with you. I have a review for that coming out, but we'll go through it a little bit. It's really good. Uh, definitely on the sweet side. Um, let me let me go to uh, yeah. That was the Castle and Key restaurant. Okay, I did show you that. Okay, I didn't. I thought I had a couple more pictures of that that uh, Castle and Key, but I do not. All right, so, so yeah, again, so the mash bill on this, for you guys that don't know, this is 63% uh, rye, 17% corn, and 20% malted barley. So I'm seeing this as a little bit of a trend, too, now with the rye uh, mash bills. Uh, everybody that loves those 95.5 rye so much, um, those Kentucky ryes that are barely legal ryes, you know, 51, 52% rye uh, grain. Usually the second dominant, you know, uh, grain in there is usually corn. And now we're seeing Old Forester has done it, making the second dominant, excuse me, making the second dominant grain barley. Uh, we see it here. And I think a couple of other people have done it as well. So let's go to batch one and see what it goes. Here we go. Mm. 
A lot of orange off the bat. Let me go back to the chat here. Thank you, John. Hey, Julie Like is in the house. What's up, Julie? Oh, there's Caitlin Brubaker. Thank you so much for the uh, for the samples with you and your dad. That's awesome. Cameron Lochner, Compass Box is some of the most beautiful bottles in whiskey, period. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Julie and Dan Like, if you're in the chat, what is up, guys? You legends. Love when you guys are hanging out tonight. All right. Wrenches, I am up to date on Super Chat, says a Linux cat. Thank you so much, guys. This is interesting. This has like a, it's almost. So for any of you out there that smoke cigars or like uh, maybe even, even pipes, if you like, there's a Lancero cigar I have that um, the La Dancha, where it has like this orange, like a little bit of a hint of citrus that mixes with the tobacco. And that's what I'm getting in this glass. It's really interesting. Hey, Dusty Dan's in the house. What's up, man? It's uh, it's also, you know, kind of dark fruity as well on top of it. A lot of cinnamon. Yeah, I mean, that orange punch is is really nice. Now, it's a different orange punch, though, that, I'm, that I get in some other rides because this is just really, um, uh, like, it's that tobacco laced, that, you know, that flavor that's on it. It's really nice. Oh, I love the nose on this. This is all. This makes me want to go grab a cigar right now, but I have to smoke those outside. <laughs> all right, here we go. I'm gonna try it. Here we go, guys. Mm -mm -mm. Ooh. That's sweet. That's very sweet. A lot of like dark honey. Mmm. Baking spices for days, cinnamon, nutmeg. More of the orange is there, but I'm surprised how like dark fruity it is. I just got like this little, like right on the back end, like this little kick of like lemon meringue. You know, like a toasted lemon. And that could come from like the barley, maybe. Man, that's nice. Shit. I'm a kind of a big fan of that one off the bat. Let's go for another sip. That's good. That's a, just a damn good rye right there. Nothing to complain about. A little bit of a black licorice note, too. A little bit like a like a star anise, like right in the back end, but it's more candy than it is herbal. If that makes sense. I like that a lot, actually. This, it actually drinks easier than a, like, it, well, 99 proof, call it 100 proof. It drinks a little lighter for a, uh, than a 100 proof than you would think. It's got like this sun-made raisin date thing going on too. That's really just overlaying the whole experience. A little bit more of that tobacco, the honey. Kind of a punch of fruit flavor there too. That's good. That I'm digging that rye. It's it's not an this is not like an overly sweet rye. I mean, it's got a perfect balance I think of like smoke, tobacco, the rye spice the star anise or like that candy black licorice, but it's all wrapped in like this candy coated shell. Uh, and like a lot of dark fruits too, like the raisin, the date, a lot of honey too. That's great. Man, starting off the night right here. Okay, let's go to batch two, see if we get any differences. Let me get my water. Ugh. Anyone know where the dill notes come from in a rye, says DC. Uh, basically, DC, that, that all comes in from uh, the type of rye grain they're using, uh, or so I've been told. You know, rye grain is very temperamental. That's why, you know, there are those different types of, you know, you have a Pennsylvania-style rye, a Maryland-style rye, New York-style rye, Kentucky-style rye. All of these different types of rye whiskeys 
they have very extreme, you know, flavor profiles. Uh, you know, Maryland, I think, is pretty close to the Kentucky style. Pennsylvania usually is a really high ride, Nashville too. Yet, of course, you have the Indiana, you know, the 95.5. Um, but I think it's really dependent on the rye grain. And a lot of people are doing different stuff with the rye grain too nowadays. They're, some people are, are toasting the actual rye grain before they, you know, they're, you know, they're making their, their whiskey, which gives a little bit of a sweeter profile. But that dill note really has to do, I think, with the combination with the yeast strain and also the type of rye grain you're using. All right. Hey, Donald Rance is in the house. What's up? Uh, Freedom comes in. What's up, Freedom? I was outside all day working on a construction project, and the wind here was a killer today. So that being said, I'm warming up with some rare breed. Uh, there you go. Tammy Brennicky. Oh, old man Joe's in the house. What's up? I thought I was getting screwed for batch one, says Kentucky Bluegrass. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So let's go to number two and see if we get any uh, differences here. Oh, number two is very different. Oh. Number two is more rye forward, where number one is a little bit more candy forward. Very interesting, uh, very interesting, you know, contrast between the two. Wow, so this is more of a this is more of a typical rye that I would think that I would get from a from a rye whiskey, especially a younger one. This is just all like minty, apricot, bright, some light honey. It's way more floral than this one is. This one is almost you can, you know, you could kind of find the youth in this rye whiskey with those floral forward notes. God, it's night and day. Number one is just total, you know, a ton of sweetness here. And I'm, I'm curious, Caitlin, uh, Caitlin, if you and your dad, did you find those differences too between the two batches? I think they're both really different. Oh, man. I got like a green melon note here on this one. Yeah, you know, green melon, honey, again, that floral component to it, mint. I feel like the finish is a little bit nicer on batch one. Hmm. Yeah, I'm a, I love the flavors in batch one. Batch one is a hitter. Batch two is good. It's just more of kind of a, a younger... Like if you like more of the rye forward notes, a little bit more of the florality to it, some a lot of honey, a little lemon, apricot, you know, this is the, where this kind of goes a little bit more on the dark fruit side in, in batch one. Batch two is a little bit more on the stone fruit side with the uh, the apricot and mm. all right. I really like batch one. So if you guys have a choice to get batch one or batch two, batch one, I think uh, definitely wins for me. Not to say batch two is bad. It's just a little bit more of a kind of a younger, typical rye. Uh, but I can appreciate the flavors that are in here. It is pretty complex for a three-year rye. But batch one is a hitter. Shit. That's really good. Um, let's see here. Uh, the Colville rye is so good. Caitlin Brubaker says, yes, so different. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that, Caitlin. I really appreciate you guys. Uh, sharing those. Um, I don't know if that those will ever make it or I'll, I'll ever see batch one. I have a feeling batch one sold out. Batch ones kind of go like this, you know, nowadays. Hey, Todd Ritter's here. What's up, Todd? I think uh, how the rye is processed ground for mashing is distinct from the flavor profile it brings. Yeah, that's part of it too. It is lactic acid created by the bacteria specifically. Yeah, I mean, yeah, all that stuff. The fermentation, you know, with, with uh, rye whiskey and, you know, the actual grain and where it's sourced from. That's why, like, Western, if you go out West, like, their rye whiskey is so different from anything they make out East. And then you have the Kentucky rye and all that, you know, all sourced from the Midwest. You know, it's – terroir plays a huge role in a lot of whiskeys, as we see with scotch and as we see with uh, Irish whiskey, 
uh, as we, you know, and we're seeing that across American whiskey too, with how many different craft distilleries we have all over the country now. I feel like I'm moving my hands around a lot tonight. I'm very excited tonight, guys. This is so so much fun. All right. Uh, there's a pepper note and almond note between them to me. Yeah, I could see the I could see the almond note in uh, number one. Uh, pop him, don't watch him's in the house. What's up, pop him, don't watch him. Nice to see you, buddy. Um, let's see. Live wire whiskey's in the house. He says, "Cheers, Jason. Thanks so much, Live Wire. Thanks for coming and hanging out tonight." Um, what else we got here? Whiskey Crusader Will is here. What's up? We got part of the Whiskey Crusaders in the house. What is up, Will? Love you guys. It took me like three days to recover from that Irish whiskey night. Just letting you know. <laughs> that was a lot of fun, guys. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's go to something next here. Let's go to what do we got? 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 All right. We're going to try. Um, let's see. I think we'll stay in the rye family before we move to the bourbons here. So let's go to, oh, this one. This one's interesting. So this is from my buddy Keith Schmidt. I don't know if he's in the chat. But do you guys, you guys remember the brand Mic Drop? They were very, very extremely popular in the beginning when they first came out. Haven't heard too much from them yet or lately. But Mic Drop released, uh, and I'll show you the picture of it here. Mic Drop released this. This is their L20-01. This is a four-year-old straight rye whiskey. Now, what uh, Keith had found out is that this rye is actually sourced from Wilderness Trail. So this is a 108-proof Wilderness Trail uh, sourced rye whiskey. Now, I, I couldn't find like any pricing on this, like how much it costs, but... I will say, I'll give, I'll give Mike Drop one thing. They know how to pick really good barrels. Um, anything I've had from them has been really good. Just, you know, the Mike Drop stuff is really pricey, unfortunately. Um, let's go to the let's go to the chat here. Uh, Eric McFarland says, keep an eye out for the Castle and Key Slow Hand Single Barrel Rye. Released last week with the Old Forester 117 release, folks in Kentucky were torn on where to stand in line. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, I, I, you know, Castle and Key isn't. I don't know if they're planning on coming to Ohio, but unless I see one in Kentucky in the next couple months, uh, they're probably sold out already. Uh, Kilko is here. Oh, it was about ninety bucks for the ride. Thank you, Keith. Uh, you can't win if you don't play. Granted, I don't think I am allowed to win anymore. People might come for me. Yeah, Kilko's been on a hot streak lately. If he wins again, I don't know. The match and drum, the influence of water is often overlooked in whiskey and its flavor profile. It's elemental. That's right. I paid 70 for the mic drop. All right, let's go for a smell of this one here. Again, I'm, I'm picking up a lot of lemon in rise lately. I know what it is. Lemon... The lemon, the orange, and the citrus, all that coming through. But it's also kind of back this little, like, chocolate note on this rye, which is kind of nice. Which I have gotten before in some of the wilderness trails, so that does not surprise me. Man, what's that, what's that note right there? Ah. See, this is what happens when you're live. Like, when I'm filming my reviews and I'm... You know, I'll come across a note and I can't like pick it up and I'll sit there for like 15 minutes, 10 minutes and just, what the hell is that? And I edit that shit out so you guys don't get to see that, but you're going to get to see it like on a live stream. Uh, Richard Two said, just picked up ECBP A121. Nice. Um, Yeah, this is this is coming off like very just like citrus and chocolate to me. It's really nice on the nose. Let's go for a sip. Mmm. Oh yeah. Wow, this kind of wave of like almond butter kind of took over. Like almond butter and rye spice. A little bit of black licorice. That chocolate note is still there. The citrus is still there. 
There's also like a uh, like a like a yellow cake. No, like a, there's a very like distinct like vanilla sweetness to it in this uh, as well. I like this one a lot. Mmm. That's I could. The, yeah, the second sip was even sweeter. The rye spice kind of starts taking a back seat to like the vanilla and the and like the yellow cake, uh, like flavors that I'm getting on the back end. That's good. I don't know if I'd pay ninety for it though, because I could get a regular Wilderness Trail single barrel rye, you know, at the store for, you know, fifty bucks. But this is a damn nice rye, so I'll I could dig that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so we're gonna go to one of the. We have two hitter ryes right now that I got a samples from Matt at the Whiskey Crusaders. I have the Van Winkle 13-year rye and the Boss Hog Chapter 7, which is, uh, what is it, the Magellan and something else? <laughs> My husband keeps telling me, to be clear, it doesn't taste like caramel, apple, melon, chocolate. Ugh, quit teasing me. <laughs> Uh, Kaylin, I'm sure Dad and I can figure out a way to get you a sample of the Cas Castle and Keith Slow Hands Rye Release Number One. Oh, Kaylin, yes, yes, yes. I would gladly send you something back in return. Uh, Tony G, cheers, buddy. Haven't been able to find, haven't been on, uh, haven't able, been able to be on for a while. Almost back. Thanks, Tony. Glad you're back, buddy. Nice to see you, bud. Um, also. I do want to, oh yeah, there we go. The Boss Hog Magellan, pure Cinnabon, says Alejandro. Um, Mashville, how long do you think you might be going tonight considering going live tonight? I know people will ask me, so I might go on for a little bit. Uh, I'll probably do my usual. I'll probably go to 11 by the time I get through all these samples we do the giveaway. So, And that is the Mashville. If you guys have not subscribed to Stanley Wags yet, please do. Jeffrey Wack, uh, Van Winkle this stream. <laughs> Oh, man, I could crush a Cinnabon right now. Hell, yeah. Greg J, aloha from Hawaii. Aloha, buddy. Or how do you – what's the what's the hand signal? Is this aloha? Aloha? I think this is it. <laughs> Michael Tom uh, Tomasino, Old Farser 1920 is fantastic. Yes, it is. Um, all right. Let's go to – what should I do first, guys? You, wanna, you want my take on the Van Winkle – or the boss hog first. I'll let you guys vote in the chat. Light it up. Let me know. What do you guys want first? I'll get a glass ready here. I'll get some water. <laughs> Zach Andrews. I wish I could crush a, a Cinnabon. I think he meant Cinnabon, not Sigabon. <laughs> Rob M., thank you so much. Boss hog first. Oh, Pappy Van Hog. You guys want me to blend it? Do a Van Hog? <laughs> oh shit. Uh yeah, the Magellan's Atlantic is number seven. So we'll uh we'll kind of go through what it's what it's finished in here. You know, I'll save the Van Winkle for last because Van Winkle is always so crazy with everyone. Van Winkle, Boss Hog, Mike Dalla, what's your spiciest ride? I think there's some good strong black pepper notes. Um uh, Lizette F, I gave up drinking during Lent at the gate. Peter better not ask me nothing about nothing of what I've done. <laughs> okay, I don't know what that means, but uh, cheers, Boss Hog, though. Okay, let's do Boss Hog first, and then we'll get into the Van Winkle, and we'll see how that uh, – the Van Winkle rye, you know, goes for shit tons of money. But so does this Boss Hog. The Boss Hog retails for about 500 bucks usually, each of these releases – I give Whistle Pig a lot of shit because I think their stuff is way overpriced, especially the Boss Hog stuff. I know you get a little metal pig dressed in a Halloween costume in each one, but is that really worth paying 500 bucks for? We're going to find out. I'm pouring the full ounce in here. All right. So let me show you a bottle of what this looks like. Speaking of the bottle, here we go. So this is the bottle of it. It is pretty beautiful. So, I mean, it's a gorgeous bottle. Whistle Pig, the Boss Hawk 7, uh, the Magellan's Atlantic. I mean, it is pretty gorgeous. Uh, so let's, let's, let me see here what the finishing is. Okay. So this is inspired by the first recorded 
the first recorded circumnavigation of the Earth. Uh, so this is Whistlepig Spanish oak casks, which originate in the forests of northern Spain. <gasps> Unlike American white oak, this Spanish is high in tannins, knotty and porous. Uh, it's challenging to make staves from, but provide a unique spicy flavor. So, so let's see here. This is, holy crap. So 17-year-old straight rye whiskey spends three weeks resting in Spanish oak before finishing in a South American teak wood for just three days. Uh, a one-hour proprietary toast with the Spanish oak creates a small char layer that removes some tannins but preserves the good ones. A medium-level toast grants incredibly aromatic cinnamon, allspice, and roasted nut flavors. Um, all right. Uh, 500 bucks. Uh, this one in particular, so these were ranging between 105 and 108-ish proof. Um, this one that he had is, I can't even read his writing. Oh, no, that's the wrong bottle. Is it this one? Oh, yeah, this one. This one's 105.8, so I think this one's probably on the high side. So let's try a $500 rye whiskey tonight. Here we go. Uh, hey Jason, I haven't had C and K one, but do but do have batch two. I thought good for young rye. Love the bottle. Popped a Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof tonight. It's awesome. Cheers. Absolutely, Adam. Yeah, I didn't. I, I like batch two of the um, the Castle and Key, but batch one had like this extra layer of flavor to it. Really liked it. Sounds pretentious. <laughs> huh. Lisa Grimm, she's showing the pig. I wouldn't pay 500 for it if it came in a real pig. <laughs> <That's freedom. laughs> uh, come on, man. You could have bacon for days if it came in a real pig. No? Come on. Who doesn't love bacon? All right. Let's go to the nose here. Wow. They're not kidding. I mean, this is cinnamon sugar candy for days. Holy shit. God, like like royal vanilla icing. Yes, I said royal vanilla icing because I watch baking shows. I like to bake. I like to cook. <laughs> what if it came with a barbecue whole hog? Yeah, what if it came with like like a like a full like pig that was, you know, the you get the like the suckling pig with like the crispy skin? Oh my god. I'm sorry if there's anyone out there that's a vegetarian that's probably throwing up right now, but that shit's delicious. Yes, everybody, please hit the like button if you can. Really appreciate it, guys. Again, tonight, if uh, for those of you that do not know yet, we are giving away a bottle of Stag Junior Batch 15. There's the bottle. This exact bottle will belong to someone by the end of the night. There it is. 131.1 uh, proof. Absolute candy, Skittles, Starburst, wrapped in... You know, wrapping around like that cherry cola stag junior like flavor profile. It's a hitter of a release. Absolutely great stuff. So somebody, any super chat tonight will get you entered to win this bottle tonight. So good luck to all of you. <laughs> Royal. <laughs> now that's pretentious. Yes, Royal Icing. Hell, now I want some barbecue. I'm with you, Wildlife and Whiskey. Um. I thought it was a cinnamon bomb flavored whiskey uh, when the sample was handed to me blind. Yeah, it's very cinnamon forward. It does. It, it tastes like a like like a baking. Like I get the rye bread in there. It's like if you put like a cinnamon, but instead of like the cinnamon dough, you, you use like rye bread in there. Jeez. All right, I can't wait to taste this. A five hundred dollar whiskey. Here we go, guys. Cheers. Hmm. <laughs> That's interesting. So there is 
like a burnt um, gingerbread cookie. That's what it is. Gingerbread cookie. There's, I'm getting, I'm picking up ginger. I'm getting the sugar, the brown, like the burnt brown sugars. It tastes like if a, if a, if a gingerbread cookie was slightly overdone to me with all that, but like heavy, heavy cinnamon, some icing. I'll give it this. This is very unique. I don't think I've tasted anything like this. Like a, you talk about a cinnamon bomb. I mean, you get cinnamon in some bourbons and some whiskeys. I've never had it like this. I mean, this is like punch you in the face. Yeah, it's like the the people that bake Cinnabons, like you're at the mall and you're just like minding your own business. And then the people from Cinnabon come out from behind the counter and like you turn around and they just fucking hit you in the face with a Cinnabon and you don't even know it. <laughs> That's what it's like. It's like that impactful. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, it's not Willet cinnamon. Um, it's Cinnabon cinnamon. Yeah, it's not like fresh ground cinnamon. This is sweet, almost like artificial cinnamon extract. <laughs> yeah, gingerbread man on fire. Yeah, kind of. Um, all right, let me see. I missed a couple of uh, super chats here. Bro, you're making me hungry. Yeah, I know. I have a tendency to do that. <laughs> Alex Crank, did you ever try the Samurai Scientist? Yes, I did. Um, I I like the Samurai Scientist. Again, I, I have nothing against the Boss Hogs. They're all really unique, and I love the casks that they use. I just think it's so fucking expensive. I hate that about it. They make it really hard to, you know, pull the trigger on something. I, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to spend five hundred bucks on a on a you know, on a rye. I, I just don't. Uh, give me a bourbon to hunt for opening my ECBP. There you go. There you go, Richard. Elena O says, I want that stag, baby. Good luck. Vegetarian, uh, vegetarianism is a low stakes gamble. <laughs> the master drum stag 2020 or that, or this. Oh my God. I can't believe how fucking like baking forward it is. It's. It's like you literally walked into like a gingerbread. It's like a gingerbread cookie. Like you live with a gingerbread cookie. And this is the shit you smell all day. That's what it smells like. You guys ever get the, like around the holidays, does it got, like you have like those gingerbread cookie candles? That's what it smells like. It's like gingerbread cookie wrapped in like vanilla baking extract. But on the palate, Nick Foles, so barrel-proof fireball. <laughs> no, that's that's like artificial, like cinnamon red-hot candy. This is more like natural cinnamon I'm picking up here. <laughs> DC screenshotted it. <laughs> oh, shit. Who's your favorite rock metal drummer, Jason? Oh, God. Probably, I mean, currently... Um, I don't know. I have a bunch. I mean, if you're talking about current, probably still uh, Danny Carey from Tool. Uh, between him and Mike Portnoy, those two guys are like my drumming gods, honestly. Any super chat, it's usually $5 just checking. Yeah, it's any, any super chat tonight, guys. Get you in the running. I really appreciate it. I got five on it. Uh, send some stack to Colorado. Thanks for the chance, Jason. Absolutely, Brett. If Brawl Hog was 200, would you see it on shelves or would it all be on secondary? Um, I think you would see a lot of it on secondary at 200 because that's a, a, a good bottle where you could buy that and it's in a fancy enough packaging with that topper that you can flip it pretty easy. I think I think a lot of people would be interested in it. I don't see the the, the Boss Hogs on secondary because... A lot of people don't want to pay the 500 for it because I don't think there's a lot of buyers on the other end that are willing to pay a premium for that bottle either. So if Boss Hog has one thing going for it, it's at a price point that the flippers usually kind of stay away from it. I mean, between this and some of the other rides I've had, this is really unique. I'll give it that, but I just don't think it's a $500 whiskey at all. 
if it didn't have this little like burnt gingerbread cookie thing on the back end where it's actually coming off a little bit bitter, uh, I think, you know, it'd be pretty stellar. But as far as uniqueness and as far as what I look for in a rye whiskey, I mean, it's very unique. It's really delicious, especially up front. The finish is kind of killing it for me, though. I mean, there's enough cinnamon there that it makes up for that kind of like that slight, the slight hint of bitterness just kind of punches you. And then all of a sudden the cinnamon takes over again and the vanilla icing and all like that cakey, like that doughy, uh, like breadiness to it. But, um, I gotta say out of most of the boss hogs that I've had, I would put that one up there, maybe top two or three, just based on how unique it is. It's really good. It is a Cinnabon. It's a Cinnab It's a Cinnabon bomb. All right. All right. It's time for the Van Winkle Rye. 13. Here we go. Damn. So this is another sample shared to you from Matt from Whiskey Crusaders, who's the patron saint of whiskey. We're going to pour all this shit, guys, because I have never had this. So I am really excited to give you notes on it. Um, let's go to the chat real quick. I try to keep up with the chat guys. There's a lot of you in here tonight. And I really appreciate it. Um, Lito Cordero, it's hard for me to be critical of someone wanting to spend $500 on whist whistle pig after I spent close to 800 on a Macallan Oscuro. Yes. Uh, I, and again, we, we say this all the time that, uh, you know, it's all subjective and, and what you're willing to pay for a bottle of whiskey. Uh, I know a couple of guys that want to collect every single boss hog. They're happy to drop the 500 bucks on it, uh, but that's them. If that's what you feel, that's what you want to do, have at it. Um, I just, you know, personally for me, and I've said this before too, I've become way more selective in what I buy, you know, especially, you know, you kind of, I've, you know, you go through all the stages of whiskey buying in the beginning, you're so excited and you want to buy everything and try everything. You buy everything, price is no object. You're willing to go on the secondary, pay premium amounts to get these bottles uh, to have on your shelf. Like, look at my look at my collection. I just started like two months ago. I already have over 100 bottles, you know, stuff like that. Then as you kind of get into the midpoint of your journey, it's, it's more like uh, you get into barrel picks and you're looking for like that unique, you know, that uniqueness to it. And then you start getting into like the intermediate and the, uh, the expert level like bottles, the higher end bottles that you want to try to find. And then I think once you get past that, then you're kind of where I'm at right now, where I don't need to buy 15,000 bottles every time I see one. I'm very selective what I buy. I like to, you know, obviously get things that are unique um, and things that I think you guys would be interested in. Obviously, there's the usual suspects that you always want to get, like BTAC, and you want to get the Stag Junior batches because they're always pretty damn good. You want to get the new releases to to review, obviously, uh, but when it comes to like putting down the money to buy a specific bottle, you know it's got to be really good or really stand out or be something unique for me because there's so much damn whiskey out there nowadays. Um, I want to be hit in the face with a Cinnabon so bad. So is Maurizio. Me too, right? That's like the greatest. I'm gonna. I might pay someone at Cinnabon to come around and just hit me in the face with a Cinnabon. You know, I'm going to do it at the mall one day. I won't even tell my girlfriend that's going to happen. I was just going to get hit in the face with a Cinnabon. <laughs> what is a $500 whiskey? That's that's exactly the question. A $500 whiskey is a whiskey that is worth $500 to whatever specific person is willing to pay that amount. That's what it is. I don't, you know, do you ever think that there's a whiskey that that's worth that much? I can make a case for, for whiskeys that are aged that high. You know, whiskeys that have a really high age component, you know, the, the longer a whiskey ages, the more taxes get paid on it, the more uh, time gets put into it. I could see why those bourbons and those whiskeys, uh, scotches and Irish whiskeys could get to that point where it's a lot of money. You know, they put a lot of time and effort into letting that age and, you know, bottling that right at the right time, you know, with a certain price point. But, you know, I just don't think that's, I think that means more to me than throwing a, uh, you know, I mean, you have different cask finishes too, which also add to cost. I mean, that's a, this is what we're seeing the trend now. You have a millions. I mean, we just read this is Spanish oak, teak wood, 
you know, they've used a lot of other different wood varietals to, you know, change the, you know, change the, the landscape of the whiskey. I mean, those, that's, those are expensive too, which all factors into the price. A lot of people just think it's, you know, this should be cost what it costs and I shouldn't have to pay two or $300 for a whiskey, but uh, $500, but you got to remember, you know, there's a lot of cost behind that, that, you know, we don't get to see. So when you choose to put the blinders on, you don't want to know what went behind the scenes to make that whiskey. You know, you're, you're kind of, then that, then all it comes down to is if what you're willing to pay. If you're not looking at the process behind it, what it was to make it, to curate it, to age it, especially if they're aging it in something new and different, then it's, it's all about what you're willing to pay. That's it, baby. It's that easy. Uh, Brian Bales. Cheers, Jason. What's up, Brian? Thanks for coming in. Uh, that bitter is that teak wood. Yeah, totally, Sarah. I get it. Um, Jason, $15 for a stag junior 15. Should be lucky tonight. Cheers. Good luck, DJ. Um, $500 willing buyers will ultimately convince themselves it's good. The cycle never stops. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing that, you know, I talk about with uh, with the old, you know, with the old Rip Van Winkle and the Van Winkle 12 and all the pappies. You know, these guys that plop down 15, you know, uh, not 15,000, but thousands of dollars to get those bottles. And they drink it and they act like it's like God's gift to whiskey. They have to think that way. I mean, wouldn't you? If you pay that much, um, you know, if, if you... And I'm talking about the guys that buy that stuff and they're not, you know, they know what it is and they know the, 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 uh, the story of Pappy and how difficult it is to get. But I mean, if you're not, if, if, if you're not educated, I should say, that's probably a better word. If you're not educated enough to know what's out there, but all you know is Pappy and you have the coin to get up that bottle, you're, you are already think in your mind that it's the most amazing thing you've ever tasted because you just plop down that much money to get those bottles. So I think there's a, you know, there's an effect there between what you pay and what you, you know, that's why I always think, you know, blind is really the true test. I have a video that I'm working on soon. Uh, I have a, I have samples from Pappy 15, Pappy 23. I'm still looking for a Pappy 20 and I'm going to throw that in a blind tasting with regular everyday, uh, well, not every day, but just bourbons that are a lot easier to get than Pappy's. And I'm going to see how it does. Um, and I think that's going to be a great video and I can't wait to do it. I just need to find a, a sample of Pappy 20. So uh, let's see here. Albert Orozco. Cheers, buddy. Uh, I've spent $400 on a meal for two before. There you go. I mean, I mean, I've spent a lot, yeah, on that too. Is Boss Hog worth the price? Um, I don't think so. I don't think it's worth 500 bucks at all. I would love to see it at 200, 250. But again, I'm, I don't know what the cost is behind that. But knowing Whistle Pig and how high their markup is on a lot of their bottles, I would imagine there's a pretty big markup on those uh, those Boss Hogs. But, you know, I don't know what it costs to make like those, you know, die cast metal toppers. I mean, it could be really expensive. I'm sure it factors into the price. Um, let's see. Do it, Pappy Blind. Yep. I just I said it. It's coming, man. Have you reviewed Smoke Wagon Elevator Batch? Thoughts? No, I have not yet. I haven't. There's no Smoke Wagon here in Ohio, so I don't get to see those things, unfortunately. I'm lucky to have a, a small batch and an uncut, unfiltered, and a couple of picks that I've gotten out of state, but uh, I haven't seen that one. Uh, 100% agree. Lots of mental influence. You pay a lot and you trick yourself into thinking it's amazing, but sometimes it really is. So there's that. Okay, yeah. I mean, sometimes it is worth it. Fingers crossed. Thanks, Jason. Okay. Let's go into this Van Winkle. I'm going to show you uh, looking forward to the Pappy video. Me too. If anyone in the chat has a actual bottle of Pappy 20 here, um, you know, shoot me an email at the Mash and Drum at Gmail. I'll be happy to trade a sample with you or even pay for it. That's the one I'm missing. Uh, it, it could just be one ounce, whatever you have. I don't care if you're willing to share it. Thank you so much. I'm just trying to get those three in a blind in a, in a video. So appreciate it. Uh, what weeders would you put against pappies in a blind? Um, what weeders? I think some of the old fits, uh, the old fitsies, as I call them, some of the older ones, like the 15-year, 
the 14 year. I think those would do really well. Um, uh, I'm not a big fan of the Larceny Barrel Proof, unfortunately. Uh, but just like some bourbons in general, I would probably see if I could, I would put against the Pappy, you know, um, I don't know. I would have to see how that would shake out. So I have some ideas, but we'll see how it goes. Bring me to batch 15. One of the best experience explanations on the question of the price of whiskey and value, the process and art put in the bottles is what I look for. Exactly. I'm loving some Abelor Abunad right now. Thanks for the shows. Absolutely. Michael. That is a cast strength hitter of a freaking scotch right there. All right, so let me show you the bottle. So this is the Van Winkle 13 uh, rye. And here it is. If you guys have never seen it, the Van Winkle Family Reserve rye, uh, 13 years old, and comes in at 95.6 uh, proof, it looks like, uh, on this one. So that's the bottle, and people pay... A lot of money to get their hands on this one. Let's see how it shakes out here. I've never had this before in my life. So thank you so much to Matt at Whiskey Crusaders for sending this along. Um, this is pretty amazing. Stack 14 versus 15. Ah, uh, 15 hands down. Hands down. A lot of people love the 14. I mean, it was good. I just didn't – I thought it was a very solid Stag Junior batch. I didn't think there was anything special about it, honestly. I thought Stag 13 was better than 14. Um, I thought it was like a step down from batch 12, which was one of my favorites, probably my favorite still. Uh, but batch 15 is right there too. Uh, I did a Stag Junior blind of batches 9, 12, and 15 uh, together, uh, which was a really crazy uh, blind to do. And 12 still went out. 15 was like right there. 15 is just really, really on the on the sweeter side. I would drink 12 more, I think, but 15 is really good. Strolling Troll, Larson Ralph, I really enjoy the two I had was so heavy on cherry, which I really love. Kind of why I enjoy Stag Jr. so much. Yeah, if you like that cherry. Yay for Central Ohio and its allocation. Why did I move from Florida? <laughs> Uh, has anyone talked to Chris at Bourbon Sane lately? No, no, I haven't yet. So I'm not really sure what's going, going on with him. Have you had the four gate split stave bourbon? Yes, I have. They sent me a sample of it. I thought it was really unique. It's very sweet. Um, that was one of those four gate, uh, releases I didn't think was a $200 release. I mean, it was unique. I did like what they do with the, with the barrels, but, um, there's other stuff from four gate that I prefer a lot more than the split stave. Uh, Pappy versus three chord 15. Oh yeah. That's a good one. Uh, Joseph McCarran sent a super sticker. Thank you so much. I traded a four roses pick for another stack. 12 was pretty happy with that. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure, Brian. All right. So on the nose for the uh, Van Winkle, let's go here. Here we go. I don't know if this is residual, but I am getting some cinnamon on here. <laughs> Hmm. You're picking up the age a lot on this. Good amount of oak. What's it say in the chat? <clears throat> uh, Zach Andrews saying, you want a sample of that, of the IR first evolution barrel batch three, I could throw in a Van Winkle 13 as well if you really like it. The IR first evolution batch three, barrel batch three. What is that? What am I missing, Zach? What's the IR first evolution? It's not, it's not coming to me. <laughs> Any four gate you'd recommend you haven't done a video on? Um, the River Kelvin rye is amazing. That's just a delicious MGP rye. Uh, the next one coming out, the Batch 13, the Kelvin Collaboration number three, is ridiculously good. Just saying. That stuff's amazing. Channel content versus reading chat. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> 
I I try my hardest to keep up with the chat, guys. You know, it's tough. You know, we got about 400 people in the chat right now. It's crazy. So thank you so much for watching. All right. So, yeah, definitely cinnamon here. You definitely get a nice sweet oak profile. The rye spice is there, but it's coming through like a chocolatey rye, which is kind of nice. There's definitely like an herbal quality. There's a mint to it, like a spearmint. A little bit of black pepper. Maybe like the slightest hint of clove as well. Oh, Iron Roots first evolution barrel, the final batch three. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah, man. Yes, Zach, I would like that. Love the fighting cocks lid. Yeah, just got this in uh, in Kentucky last time I was there. Yeah, 400 in chat and only 200 likes. Come on, guys, smash the like button. All right, here we go. Let's try the Van Winkle 13 year. Let's see if it's worth the hype. What's happening? Is that it? <laughs> Hold on a second. All right. I mean, it's good. Great balance. Mint. It's got some great age to it. 13 high age rise are not really around that often. Um, I, I really don't know what to kind of, oh, it's getting a little fruitier now. Oh, <laughs> uh, Whiskey Crusader Will. Yep. That was my reaction too. <laughs> so, so Will basically, I can see what Will did. Will probably took a sip, looked around. Maybe took another sip, and then he just ate some bacon. Went back to the bacon, right? Well, that's exactly what you did, buddy. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a good, solid rye. I mean, it's okay. It's good. Like, if you gave this to me, I could. this is one of those ryes you could sip on all night. There's not much of a really big finish to it at all, which is very typical with Buffalo Trace. But, God, I mean, come on. People are paying, like, a 1000 bucks for this shit? Come on. You got to come on. It's nuts. There's just not a lot to it. It's also very thin. Like it whips right through your palate. There it goes. Like a freaking Ferrari just whipping by. I, I will say it's sweeter than I thought it was going to be because, but that also, that's very also typical from Buffalo Trace. Um, there's a lot of like caramels. There's the slightest hint of black licorice there. You get the black pepper spice. The mint is there, like a sugary, uh, like a sugary, like minty, almost like an Andes candy with there too, because, but not nearly as like minty and as potent as that is. But it's got like that combination of like chocolate, mint there, the black pepper. Um, there is a nice little fruit punch there that I like as well, which is kind of nice. There's, there's just like, it's good, but there's nothing like overwhelmingly special about it. Honestly, I would take the boss hog over this. I'm just saying the boss hog is way more unique. It's got way more of a flavor punch and a much better finish than the Van Winkle I'm telling you, I speak of the truth, home slice. I'm just saying. Um, Chich Arlino, the end. <laughs> yeah, kind of meh. Exactly. Um, yeah, agreed. Yeah, wow. Just wow. Yeah. Old Overholt, Ball and Bond, better at 28. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't go to the old Overholt at 28, but I got to say, the Castle and Key batch one that I had, I would take over this any day of the week. That Castle and Key batch one, 
Uh, I think I still have it here, right here. Which is the batch one? This one. No, no, that's the other one. This is the batch one. I could just go by smell. Yeah, this is the batch one. I don't know. It's just like fruitier, more interesting on the on the nose. The uh, the Van Winkle does have the age to it though, which is nice. I mean, it's got a good age to it. You can definitely tell. It's a little bit more rounded, a little bit more potent. And you get the oak profile to it. But on the palate, yeah, I love the, I like, I think the Castle and Key is more interesting than Van Winkle. Got a longer finish. It's more viscous and just more like, uh, it sticks to the palate a lot more. Ah, I mean, I mean, Thank you so much, Matt, for sending that. I know that's a very hard whiskey to get, but guys, if you have the opportunity to get a Van Winkle rye, and if it's like, save you money. I would not pay anything over retail for that whiskey. I mean, yeah, I think the JD, the Jack Daniels barrel proof rye, beats the shit out of that. I mean, hands down. It's not even close. Oh, my God. Uh, what is the most peppery rye you've had? I love heavy pepper on rye. Probably the, uh, um, God, the rare breed rye. That has a shitload of pepper on it. <laughs> I mean, that thing knocks you in the teeth for sure. Um, uh, I think Pikesville actually has a nice peppery, has a nice peppery finish too as well. Um, Jack Daniels, depending on the, uh, the barrel you get, has a nice pepper to it. Uh... Let me see. Any other rise that I've had? Um, oh, yeah. Wilderness Trail has some good pepper to it. Yeah, there's a lot that has a really good pepper to it. Somebody donated 50. Oh, let me see. Let me go up. I missed it. Sorry, guys. Let me go up. Let me go up. <laughs> Robotic, the Col that Columbus Barrel Company, do they take art you draw yourself considering a your purchase? Yeah, they do. Robotic, absolutely. Um, oh, man, I can't get back to it. Maybe I could scroll here and get to it. Uh, yeah, StreamYard only allows you to go so far. Um, well, I'm going down here, guys. Sorry. I'm trying to catch up here. Uh, the whiskey wiggle, lots of castle and key by me. What is your value on batch one? I would pay. I don't know what the I don't know what the price on that is, but that's a really nice like thirty forty dollar rye, I would think. Jeff Winbush, I had to give up another five dollars for Tool Love Fear Inc Invincible Bro. Danny Carey is the man, absolutely man. Um. Rob M. Lum, uh, the Fighting Cocks lid. Steve A, Everquate Whiskey Studies. He's been busy getting the new place set up. Then problems when he changed phones. That some of his account info got lost, but I think he's got that now. Okay. I got to reach out to him. Super sticker. Where the hell is the $50 super chat? Where did it go? Was that Julie Like? Did she send a $50 super chat? I'm looking at the picture up top. Um... Copy and paste of Julie. Okay, stop complaining about the cost of Boss Hog. Some people want food and shelter. Some people want Boss Hog. It's optional and it's okay. <laughs> yes, Julie like. Yeah, it is. It, that's what I mean. Yeah, some people want food and shelter. Some people want Boss Hog. I don't think it's a $500 whiskey at all, but it's optional and it's okay. That's what I, that's what I mean. What I think it's worth and what people are willing to pay is totally two different things. I mean, and that's what that's what a lot of us talk about on the channels. Uh, there's a big difference between what you think it's worth and what you're willing to pay. What you're willing to pay is based on what your situation is at that given time. What you think the value is, especially when you're kind of, you know, if you're watching your pennies, uh, you want to know what that best value is. So, but I get it, Julie. Absolutely. And thank you so much for the $50 Super Chat. That's insane. You're amazing. You and... You and Dan are incredible. Thank you so much. 
Uh, does the Michter's Battle Proof Rye beat it? Yes, easily. This Michter's Battle Proof Rye kills that Van Winkle 13 year. It's not even close. Not even close. Not even freaking close. Yep, it was her. Yep, Julie. Julie about Boss Hog. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so that's, yeah, that's what Julie said. Some people want food and shelter. Some people want Boss Hog. It's optional and it's okay. Absolutely. Totally. We're all, yeah, Dan L. nailed it. We buy irresponsibly, period. Exactly. Like, I just said, you know, I just showed you a pick that's going to be on sale from Fourgate for like over, for about 200 bucks, probably like 225 You know, is that crazy? Probably. But it's unique enough, and I, and I want as many bottles as I can get. That's irrational. <laughs> you know, but it, it's, it's like once you kind of, I think everybody, once they get their mind focused on what they want, usually price is no object. So... Again, it depends on what you like and what you're willing to pay. And I'm down with that. So, but if anyone else wants to pay, like uh, I think like Matt paid for that Van Winkle 13, I'm glad he got it because I wouldn't pay for it. <laughs> All right. So now we have, what do we have up here now? Now we have Doc Swinson's or the Doc McStuffins as it's known as. So Doc Swinson's uh, just came out with... Um, yeah, right. This whole hobby is ultimately irresponsible. That's the point of disposable income. That's right. It just, it depends on how much disposable income you have to spend on whiskey. Like, you know, a lot of people thought that the old Carters aren't, you know, why are people paying 200, 225 for those? Because they're fucking delicious. Any old Carter I see, I'm buying it. Because you know why? They have they have built a reputation. They've built trust with me in my wallet. I know whenever I buy a wallet, uh, an old Carter, I'm getting something delicious. So now would I want to pay over markup for that? Probably not. But at retail, it's a 200, 225. But what is in $200 these days? 250. Everything is. All the new, every fucking new release you see these days is 200 or close to it. 250, $300. It's just going to keep going up the more we keep buying stuff. This is a trend. It's going to keep going up. Uh, prices will keep increasing the more we keep buying this shit at premium prices. It's it's the it's capitalism and it's it's America, baby. That's what it is. Um, let's see. Any old Carter I see, I will buy it. I just haven't seen it exactly. The Babes of Bourbon, anything past Wild Turkey 101 isn't a necessity. So, okay, so that's where the Babes of Bourbon are. There you go. Michter's versus a nice old handy. <laughs> uh, the handy I have is actually pretty damn delicious. Um, I don't know. That's a good That's a good comparison. Maybe I'll do that. Uh, I'll keep my eye on 101. I'll, I'll keep my 101. Hopefully he doesn't catch on about how great it is. I still think 101 is kind of like a love it or hate it type of whiskey. People love it, but I've got a lot of messages that people can't stand it. Um, let's see here. Yes, on my budget, I can't spend over $50 on a whiskey. It would be ridiculous. But on another's, that's easy depending on the whiskey. Too personal to judge. Exactly. That's why, I mean, I can only guide people to, you know, what I think the value is. But that... What my value is, is it completely different from the next person's value? It just depends on what you're willing to spend. And then you also have the FOMO and you have the collectability of bottles these days. That also, it's, that's another two factors that come into it. You know, it's like, uh, you know, like this, uh, I don't know, you get, I mean, like Elmer T. Lee for, for uh, you know, for example. You know, Elmer T. Lee is generally an MSRP. It's a $40 bottle, and that's what it should cost, 40 50 bucks. But people will pay obscene amounts of money for it because they want it in their collection. And whether they drink it or not, that's up to them, and that's up to you. Um, do I think it's worth more than 40 Not really. I would pay maybe up to 100 for it just because of the rarity. But that's another factor that comes in. Um, and then you get the FOMO part, and you want to make sure you can get a bottle before it goes away. There's just so many factors these days that that factor into 
you know, whiskey purchases. It's, it's, it's really all about your personal, where you are personally in life and what your income is and what you're willing to spend. You know, that's all you can do. So, yeah, I mean, as much as I give shit people for, you know, spending and chasing Blanton's, uh, cause I don't think it's worth it. It doesn't matter. You know, people like what they like. If they love Blanton's, they love Blanton's. If they want to go around chasing it and collecting horses, you know, that's on them and that's fine. Personally, I wouldn't do it. I can offer my opinion and I think there's way better bourbons on the shelf than Blanton's. But, um, you know, when it comes to what you want, if it's what you like, it's what you like. You know, I can't, you know, I, I'm not going to fault anyone for what they like and what their palate is because all palates are so different. But, I, you know, I can go a little crazy, though, when people are paying hundreds of dollars for certain, you know, you know, uh, uh, bourbons and whiskeys. <laughs> you're pretty good at giving people alternatives, though, just like the Mictors Review this week. Yeah, I mean, you try to give alternatives. Um, which Kelvin River batch did you suggest? Seven or eight? Kelvin River. The River Kelvin Rye, I believe, is batch eight, the, the rye whiskey. I'm all for the soapbox, Jason. You're only spitting facts. Yeah, I hope I'm not talking too much. Um, Dan L says, uh, Kentucky Owl Rye came out at 300 this year. That's 50% over last year. You're right. That's the way it goes. Exactly. And Dan, how is that marketed, right? That was marketed as like the last Kentucky Owl Rye that there was going to be. You know, so again, immediately, immediately when they say the last rye, immediately FOMO kicks in. You're like, I got to have the last one. I'll have the last rye in my collection from, that, from Kentucky Owl. And that bottle is actually freaking delicious. But again, it was, it was, you know, it was way up in price, came in a really nice collector's uh, tube. It was really, you know, a beautiful bottle. But again, all these different things factor in. And I think it's just going to keep going up. 10% of my bourbon money is in this chat. <laughs> uh, DC says, worth it too, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, so there's, there's you know, that you have like the FOMO and you have the, the marketability of a, of a specific whiskey. And then you hope that whiskey lives up to those expectations. And I think the Kentucky Owl Batch 4, the last rye, it did. I think, I think it was delicious. I couldn't get my hands on a bottle, unfortunately, but I think it's great. Uh, next time I'm in Kentucky, I'm going to see if I can find one. I'm probably going to pull the trigger on it because um, I think it's really delicious. Ron Miles, Willard, four-year rice siding in Kentucky, was about to get two bottles for 65 per bottle. Yeah, I mean, Willard, four years, a great, you know. Uh, Master Jim, it's not even the last rye. just lasts in that series. Dixon said he won't just have another rye for a while. Well, there you go. So... We'll probably see another ride down the line, but I mean, batch one of the Kentucky Owl was delicious. Uh, the Kentucky Owl rye two was kind of a step below. Three was pretty good. This last one I think is stellar. So, yeah, if I see it, I'll probably grab one. Or if you know, I would love to get my hands on a bottle of that one. Minnick says Canadian is the next frontier boom. Do you agree? Disagree? And why? Um, the next frontier boom. Uh, I probably disagree with that. I just think there's such a – it's going to take a lot to break the Canadian stigma of that whiskey. Now, if they start doing stuff a little bit differently and we start getting some more, uh, I don't know, variety, uh, what's coming out of Canada right now, I think people just too much associate it with, like, Crown Royal and some of those brands. Um, I think the Alberta Premium was a great – I think we've seen more of that stuff come to the forefront, I think, you know, there could be a shot at it, but I mean, maybe it is. I mean, you, you, you see a lot of the different, you know, booms that are happening, you know, throughout, you know, this country here in the United States, I feel like the Texas, I still don't think the Texas is really taken off fully yet. I mean, it's there. Uh, I mean, I just think that's a kind of like process of elimination. Irish whiskey is the number one growing whiskey segment in the world right now. Scotch has really never lost its, you know, its uh, its popularity. Uh, American whiskey has blown up over the last several years. I think, can, you know, Canada and Canadian whiskey might just be the next one up in line. So we'll see what happens. Uh, hmm. 
I have FOMO on that stack junior, exactly. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to show you the next one we're trying tonight, guys, and this is the Doc Swinsons. So for those of you that don't know Doc Swinsons, uh, so Doc Swinsons bourbon, they pretty much, um, it's it's a an extremely small you know, collection of bourbon barrels that were too good to pass up uh, based on what they had said. It's uh, it's since grown into a, un a unique and, and an occasion, extremely rare collection of American whiskeys. Uh, each whiskey brought in is personally tasted by the three uh, main folks at Doc Swinson's. Uh, they have their flagship, their exploratory, or their rare release series. Now, this new series that has come out is called the the one that you're looking at is the Doc Swinson's Alter Ego. So the Alter Ego is their exploratory casks, uh, cask series where they play with different finishes um, and you know see how that works out. And usually, from what I've heard, they're pretty damn delicious. So I got two of them here. These are from Barry Hawk. So Barry, if you're in the chat, thank you so much. Uh, Doc Swinson's Altered Ego Straight Rye Finished in Rum Casks. And this is the Altered Ego Straight Bourbon Finished in Sherry and Cognac Casks. So doing something a little bit what Fourgate's doing, where they're kind of combining some cask maturation to give some, you know, big flavor uh, explosion. Um, I have a bottle of the, the uh, Exploratory Cask Series from Doc Swinson's, if you guys haven't seen a bottle. This is Batch 9. Uh, I believe, or batch six. Yeah, this is batch nine. So 15 years old. This bottle contains some of that, I think that mystery mash bill, 78.5%, you know, corn, you know, bourbon that was out there that was pretty much said to be Jim Beam stuff. So, <clears throat> all right. So let's go to... Let's go to uh, the, I'm gonna try the rum one first, I think. So this is 95 proof. Now, I don't know what whiskey is in this one. Uh, I, I don't know what they what they source to get this stuff, but we'll see. I mean, I know they've used Heaven Hill in the past and they've used the beam. Um, let's see. Sorry, guys, just trying to catch up here. Ron Miles, Texas whiskey doesn't get the credit it deserves. Nancy Fraley blended the heck out of the new still awesome release. Great things coming from Texas. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> really want to try that Doc Swinson. I need to taste it before committing to buying a bo bottle, says Maureen Franchi. Yep. So there is definitely some rum kick in here. There's a little bit of a maple syrup note that you get. Definitely some sugar, sweetness, and molasses. It's not as pungent as you'd think, though. It's not as, like, super, like, the rum's there, but it's hard to kind of pick up. It's not super, yeah, it's not, like, the nose isn't offering as much rum as I thought it would be. Let's, uh, let's go for a taste. Julia, oh, sorry, Julia. So it was a long time ago. Forget it. No, I'm not going to forget that $50 super chat, Julie. Thank you. Just the, the chat flies by so fast sometimes. It's hard for me to sometimes pick them up. And then I can only go so far back in StreamYard to go grab them. Um, but, yeah, thank you for all the super chats tonight, guys, and all the love and all the support. I appreciate it. Uh, another, I'm going to need a sip of this one. This is a good question for the chat. Best finished whiskey, go. Come on. Flood the chat. What do you guys think is your best finished uh, whiskey? It's ride time, so just appreciate all your hard work. Cheers. Thank you so much, man. So I like this on the on the palette. It, it's it's nice. Um, I don't know what this, this one is priced at. The 95 proof I don't think really helps it. It's very it's very light. 
you can kind of taste that it's a little bit watered down. The rum cask is there. You definitely get it on the palate over the nose. I like the little maple syrup hint there. Greg Lewis says, great show. Thank you so much, man. Uh, Angels. Oh, Angels. Angels Envy. Bardstown Apple Brandy. Wow, DC, I heard a lot of mixed reactions on that on that bottle. I have to get a sample of that one. I've heard people that hated that shit and people that loved it. Minor K Sherry Cask Rye says Chevy Dirty Mask. Okay. Black R411. Steve A, that's just unfair. <laughs> uh, but Steve A, I would probably agree with you. That Black R4. Point, I, I was lucky enough to get a sample of that. That's probably my my Scotch unicorn right now is the Black Art 4.1. I don't think I'll ever be able to see it or get it, but holy shit, that thing was amazing. Bellmead Honey Cask. That's a good call out, Chris. Absolutely. Um, uh, Hattori Hanzo says, belly button finish screwball. <laughs> oh, that made me laugh. Oh, the Woodford Baccarat. Okay. That's an expensive bottle. Isaac Bowman port finish for me. Um, yeah, that one is gone. I know. It's fucking, it's it's a ghost. I won't ever see that bottle. Uh Brick Lottie Rare Cast Series, 30 year, 1986. The, the dovetail. That's a really good call out. Yeah, Jameson Stout Edition. That counts. Absolutely. Dovetail is pretty epic. Absolutely. Rendezvous ride, the distillery pick. Yeah, I mean, uh High West is putting out some crazy funky like different types of rise that are finishing all sorts of casks. Um, Ugadale, all, high, all hell, Ardbeg. Jim Beam is a nice finished bottle. Belmead is great too. Uh, Parker's Heritage Cognac finish. Oh, that's a really good call out, Dusty. Oh, the barrel seagrass blew me away. I got to get a bottle of that. I heard that shit's great. Wade Ward, Chateau de Montalena. That's a great call out. Rob, I'm willing to donate a 750 milliliter bottle for the for the SC. Knob Creek Single Barrel 120 Store Pick Buffalo Trace. Um, JD Single Barrel Select. Elijah Craig Store Pick. You pick. All right, Rob. If you want to get in on the giveaway, you want to give away a uh, one of the picks. Okay. Absolutely. All right, we got another we got another giveaway tonight, guys. So we're gonna have two giveaway bottles tonight. One from Rob M. Thank you so much, Rob. Thank you so much. Oh, the Maker's Wood Finish. Very good. Wondering how the new Jefferson's Rye Cognac, Cognac is. I don't know. Jefferson's always disappoints me. What are your thoughts on Jefferson's, guys, really? I, I don't – I've never had a Jefferson's that I was like, whoa, I got to buy another one. I, I, I don't know. All right. This is the Doc Swinson's Altered Ego. This is Sherry and Cognac, 95.8. So 0.8 higher proof than the than the um than the rum cask. Let's see. All right, so this is this has a way more interesting nose. Never drink Jefferson. <laughs> Gimmick. I don't think I uh where where to go? I don't think I've ever had a thought about Jefferson's. Jefferson's is overhyped. My thoughts exactly. Maurizio, uh, Maker's Wood Finish 2020 was awesome. Just passed on the 2021. I think I'll go back and grab it. I have a sample coming my way to try that stuff. Chateau Labot, best mic drop. Yes. <laughs> Would you give a bottle of Oceans to my annoying neighbor? Sure. I'll give him any Oceans he wants. Uh, Cheech Artelino, great story, mediocre whiskey. I agree. Chris Embry, Redwood Empire, Haystack 12. Oh, my God. That's a great call out, Chris. I have one of those. That shit is unbelievably good. That's 12-year MGP finishing a port cask. Unfucking real So this is way more interesting on the nose. You get the cone, like the grapey cognac notes on this one. Let's go for a sip. Oh, that's way better than the rum one. For all, for sure. You get the nuttiness from the sherry. Like this nice little like burst of like red fruit, like a like a I would say it's more along the lines of like a blackberry. Then the cognac, holy shit. This one's this one's well beyond the the rum cask finish. Go for another sip.
Yeah, I like that one. Do I wish the proof was higher at 95.8? Yes. I would have loved to see this at 100 rather than 95.8, but it's good. If, uh, if any of you guys have Doc Swinson's in your neighborhood and they have these altered ego releases and you have a choice between the rum and the sherry cognac, the sherry cognac, hands down, way more interesting on the palate. Actually, a little bit more viscous, too. Let me throw this back here. Um, let's see. As you said earlier, it's about context of where you are in your journey. Jefferson's Ocean was fun when I started, but outgrew it once I became more acclimated for proof and feel. That's true. I know a lot of people that got into bourbon through Jefferson's. So, uh, Donald Rand's Teeling and Method Man is chestnut cast finishes were both tasty. Tropical fruit roll up bombs, fantastic whiskeys. Uh, Keith Schmidt, I had a Jefferson's presidential 17, 18, 21, and 25. They were amazing. Yeah, but they were Stitzel Weller juice. So, I mean, that's great and all, but it's Stitzel Weller. That's not Jefferson's. That's all I'm saying. And I, I had a bottle of the, the 20, the 21. I had a bottle of 21 that I killed and it was fucking amazing, but that's not their stuff. Matt Jenkins, not big on Jefferson's, but Wilderness Trail New Earth got it going on. Hell yeah, Matt. Uh... Oh, shit, I think Drums and Drams I just saw in the, in the chat. Drums and Drams, I agree that the Sherry Cognac needs more proof, but I really enjoyed it. Thought it might be a mess, but turned out pretty darn good. Yeah, absolutely, Drums and Drams. Uh, Drums and Drams just hit 1,000 subs, so everyone give him a quick congrats if you haven't subscribed to Drums and Drams. Pretty uh, pretty great channel going on right there, some good stuff. Even though you know he has to pay me royalties every month for his uh, you know Drums and Drams, but you know we work that out on the side. It's all good. <laughs> Julia says, we picked up the Doc Smith and Sherry Cognac the other day on a whim and loved it. Yeah, I totally agree, Julia. I like this one a lot. Absolutely. Uh, Midwinter's Night Strand will always be my first whiskey love. It is always amazing. Yeah, and it seems to be getting better uh, each year with its own distillate uh, using the High West distillate. So, absolutely. Oh, yeah, Barrel Armida was a wacky, funky ride. That had some crazy finishes in it. Very different. I found that to be kind of a love it or hate it as well. Um, yeah, so cool. I'm going to have another sip of this Doc Swinson's here. That's good. All right, so we're going to do the last one here tonight before we get into the giveaway. This is one I'm really looking forward to trying. This is a newer distillery that I've never tried before called Axe and Oak. And they're in Colorado. Uh, I will show you guys the bottle. Um, oh, Linus Cat, what's the cutoff for entries? Let's go until 1050. So any, so let's let's go five more minutes till 1050 for the cutoff uh, for all the entries tonight. I uh, really appreciate all you guys uh, entering tonight. Um, Let me see here. Oh, Mictor's Toasted Expressions are fantastic. Absolutely. Uh, Julie L. says, uh, congrats, Cameron. Absolutely, congrats. It's always a big thing when you guys hit those uh, 1,000 subs. Uh, thanks, y'all. Just, yep, just hit 1K and the royalty check is in the mail, Jason. Been under a rock for the last day and a half working on Patreon stuff, but cheers. <laughs> it's all right. I forgive you, man. <laughs> Uh, again, this is like a, 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 an amazing community for everyone. You know, when you have people like, um, you know, just, I mean, I, I, I mean, Cheech and Adriana and Linus Cat and, oh my God, DC and uh, all the, all the, all the bourbon wrenches, Dan and Julie like, and uh, God, everybody, the Whiskey Crusaders, all the other channels that hang out in each other's uh, uh, chats and support one another. You know, that, that all helps all the channels grow. I mean, it's amazing. Uh, let's see. What part of Colorado is Axanokin? I'm about to find out. I'm going to show you the bottle that we're trying right now, guys. So this is the Axanoke bottle. It's pretty badass. Axanoke Distillery. So this is a uh, port-finished, cast-strength uh, bourbon, 114 proof. So hell fucking yeah. Yeah. Um, this is in the heart of Colorado Springs. Accent Oaks Distillery's flagship spirit released in 2013 is their first. That was their regular bourbon. 
Uh, distilled in distilled in age in Colorado Springs for a minimum of two years in number four char New American white oak barrels. Uh, the finished whiskey is blended with a small amount of Indiana bourbon and cut with fresh Rocky Mountain water. Uh, so yeah, great stuff. So let me see if I can find some more info on the oh, here's the port finish. Axon Oak began experimenting with barrel H series. It's now time to present the first product of our experimentation, the port barrel finish. Available in limited quantities across Colorado, sitting at 114 proof in either ruby or tawny variations between six and nine months. So this was a, let me go back here and turn that off. So I have the ruby version. So we're going to try the ruby version here tonight. Let's give this one a go. Let's go back to the comments here. All you guys getting in your last minute super chats. Thank you so much. How do we enter, Kyle? Just throw in a super chat, any amount. Uh, five minutes for cutoff to enter the giveaway. Yep, 40, 1048 right now. You got two more minutes. If you guys want to get anything in, Days of Bourbon, another great channel. Go check them out. Hattori, cutoff jeans are the best. <laughs> Hattori Hanzo is kind of winning the chat right now. He's cracking me up. Axe and Oak, my current town. They're seven years. Fantastic, says Nate Gordon. Cheers, man. Kyle S., uh, you were the first whiskey YouTuber I follow. Love the content. Definitely helped me begin my whiskey journey. Currently sipping some rare breed. Hell yeah, buddy. My son went to, uh, went to school in Colorado Springs. Beautiful state. All right, let's try this stuff. Colorado whiskey generally has a very unique, like, root beer, cream soda flavor profile to me. Um, uh, the Stranahan's, if you guys have had the Stranahan's uh, single malt stuff, that's like fucking apple cinnamon in a glass. I love it. All right. Let's try this one. Oh, there it is. I don't know if I would guess this is from Colorado, but it definitely has like that craft whiskey flavor profile to it. But it's very jammy. It's got like a nice raspberry jam note to it. Cheers to the awesome community, says Hendo. Absolutely. This has been an amazing night, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out tonight. It's nice when I can just kind of sit back and chat with you guys sometimes. As much as I love the interviews and having guests on, sometimes it's nice to just kind of sit and chat. And thank you so much for all the support for the Jackie Zykin interview. How amazing is Jackie? Like, really, like, amazing. Like, she... Not only was she kind of like, you know, give us some teasers for what's coming out from Old Forester. She also said that she'd maybe hold a butt of Pekin barrel if she comes across one for the channel. Uh, holy shit. So, she, I mean, oh, anytime we have Jackie on, it's amazing. Uh, Ricky Bobby, did you say shake and bake? Love the stream tonight. <laughs> Made my own barrel through Burr Rye, Rare Breed Rye, and Rare Breed Bourbon. Oh, try it. I got definitely got to do that. Michelle Lynn, Jason, I'll always remember you taking the time in Texas a couple years ago to make uh, suggestions for me. Good stuff. Absolutely, Michelle. Um, I appreciate, you know, hanging out with you and Will, that was so much fun. I, I can't wait to do it again, hopefully next year. Mike Franklin, thanks for the entertainment. Absolutely. John T., cheers, Jason. Bruce, amazing content as always. Yes, Jackie. How do you not love Jackie? Whiskey, uh, whiskey you say, I got you. Okay, there you go. Um, also really quick, um, I want to mention whiskey mountains. If there are any women out there that want to get into a bourbon group, uh, Adriana, why don't you drop the link for your Facebook, the whiskey and women group. Uh, it's always nice for the different communities to, you know, form, you know, like-minded individuals to get together and, and taste whiskey, uh, and bourbon and talk about it. Uh, I still think that women have better noses and palates than men. <laughs> and I'll always think that, but, uh, uh, Adriana and I think, uh, you know, I just had her up before Michelle, they started a whiskey and women, um, Facebook group. So if you guys want to join, feel free to throw that link in the chat. Absolutely. Okay. Dan L. I uh, appreciate the live streams like tonight. Yeah. I, thank you so much, Dan. You and Julie are, uh, have done some amazing things in the community, especially your sharing. So I really appreciate you guys. I have to send you guys, I think, a blind flight really soon. I have a couple of bottles. Uh, so Dan and Julie have sent me a couple of really good blind flights, but 
I'm waiting for a couple more bottles. And then once I have those, I'm going to send you guys a blind flight to see what you think. So I'll have one on the way for you guys. All right. So on the nose, yes, yeah, blackberry jam. Again, it's got a little bit of that cream soda quality. A little bit of honey there. So far on the nose, this is really nice. I like this ruby cast strength. Here we go. Here it is. Join our Facebook group. Any of you women out there want to talk whiskey, go for it. Absolutely. Click it. Two away from three hundo. Come on. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> it like just like the palate on the back end just like smacked me. Holy shit, that's good. Wow, that's really good. It's got like a um It's got like this burnt toast like a burnt toast raspberry jam quality to it. Mm. Oh, thank you so much, Ryan. Appreciate that, man. All right, we got 300 likes. Nice. Uh, cheers. Good stuff, as always, Master Jerome. Thank you, Justin. All right, that's it. We're, we're cut off for entries. Burnt toast or pre-burnt toast? <laughs> no, like actual burnt toast. Dozed off for a minute. What did I miss at Ed Pulsify? <laughs> he dozed off. Sorry. Sorry I bored you, Ed. <laughs> uh, Danielle, do we, you still have the rye flight uh, to do we sent you? Yes, I do have that rye flight to do. I'm going to probably do that next week on the channel because um, uh, I have a few flights that I need to catch up on, and that one is one of them. So Dan and Julie sent me like a fucking hitter of a, what I would think is a hitter of a blind rye uh, whiskey flight. So I think we're going to do that next week. Mm. Axe and Oak. Axe and Oak out of Colorado. Shit, that's really good. I'm a fan. Holy crap. On the back end of that, I just got like this strawberry preserves note. Mixed with like that vanilla. Anybody in Colorado could grab you a bottle of that? Holy shit, that's good. That's that's one of my favorites up there tonight. Um, I think the dram of the night, guys. Well, I have one more I want to try real quick, and then we're gonna because because Keith Schmidt sent me an old forester barrel proof uh bourbon pick. And I've been saying that these are just been drinking like crazy fucking hot messes. Um so I'm going to – oh, shit, this is all taped up here. I thought I'd open this one. Oh, here we go. Uh, hey, Ben Lagar just became a member of the, uh, the, the drum line. Thank you so much. So you talking scrape off with a butter knife or full-blown fire extinguisher? No, scrape off with a butter knife, burnt toast. Yeah. Not like fully burnt, like right on the cusp of being like really burnt. Let's see if this uh, this one is fire. So Keith Schmidt wrote, Old Forester, single barrel, barrel strength, 126. He got this in New York. He literally wrote hot AF on it. And for, you know, the kids out there, that means hot as fuck. So let's see how it is. Um, all right. So the wrenches who have kept track of the names, uh, please... You know, I guess start putting them in a spreadsheet, whatever you guys are going to do. Get me the numbers of how many we have. Pop them, don't watch them. Giveaway ad, 2021 NOLA Bourbon Fest Pick Sample Set, 13-year MGP, Widow Jane, Peerless Bourbon, and Rye Finish in Absinthe Barrels. Holy shit. Thank you so much, Pop them, don't watch them. All right, so we're going to do three giveaways tonight. We have the Pop them, don't watch them giveaway, and we also have the giveaway from... Uh, it's... A <laughs> Julie, it's all boss hogs. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Julie, I know it's not, but if it was, that would be fucking epic. I'm just saying, <laughs> that would be fucking epic. Oh my god! 
Holy shit. That's amazing. <laughs> yes, hot AF. Uh, okay. So, yeah, Julie for the win tonight. I think Julie just won the chat. Julie just won the chat for the night with that comment. That was pretty amazing. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, oh, Rob M, spell out your Gmail for me. So the my Gmail is the mash and drum at gmail.com. It's pretty easy. So uh, this is the let's let's try this quick old farce or bow proof. Oh my god, that is hot as fuck. It just base. I think after all the whiskeys tonight, this just basically tastes like somebody set a banana on fire. <laughs> And I just ate it. <laughs> this is so banana. So banana heavy. So Rob M is going to have a pick that he's going to um, uh, give away. We have Pop Him, Don't Watch Him's NOLA uh, Bourbon Fest sample kit. And then we're going to finish off with the Stag Junior Batch 15. Here we go. Um, yep, there you go. That's the email. Thank you so much, Whiskey Mountains. Yeah, it's bananas. I don't even know if this, this is really bananas foster. This is like a ultra ripe banana, like right when it starts getting mushy. Yeah, that's a really heavy banana on that one. I like the banana note on on uh, on old forester, but that one is really strong. It's almost like that artificial banana extract. Yeah. All right. It's giveaway time. Uh, Adam Hinson, banana fire. Yeah, pretty much. That's what it is. Wait, add a 1910 to it as per Hendo. Wait, Hendo's giving away a 1910? What? Uh, where is Hendo? I don't see that. Um, The mash and drum, 212 entries, had to go one, had to go one per person. Okay, that's fine. Um, please pick me for the giveaway, says Freedom. 212 entries, okay. Yeah, at So Bananas, exactly. <laughs> yeah, NOLA 2021, Jerry Black, Banana Fire. Uh, I mean, let me see here. Yeah, 212 also says Mr. Whiskey Shits. Okay. All right, so let me grab, I don't know where my notebook, oh, I have, uh, dang, where'd my notebook go? I don't have it, all right, you guys will have to keep notes for me here. Well, uh, Rob M will, uh, th so this will be the first giveaway with Rob. Um, so, Rob M, since it's your giveaway, pick a uh, pick a number between one and two hundred twelve and throw it in the chat. So Rob M, this is going to be for his giveaway, which is a choice of barrel picks that he has. So Rob M, uh, pick a number between one and two hundred twelve and throw it in there, and let's see how we go. <laughs> robotic, pick a number between congrats and robotic. There you go. Rob M says 44. So Linux Cat, since you're kind of attacking or taking care of the numbers here, uh, what do we got? Who is number 44? Oh, the Chattanooga. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to pour that too and kind of give you guys a rundown of this one. This is the new Chattanooga port cask finish in their finishing series. There it is. A beautiful bottle. Gotta love uh, Chattanooga. Linux Cat goes to Whiskey Nose. Oh, shit. Whiskey Nose is the first winner tonight. Give it up for Whiskey Nose, guys. Uh, that's another, that's a newer channel. Uh, Whiskey Nose. Uh, Rob, Whiskey Nose and Rob M want you guys, if Whiskey Nose is still in the chat, definitely, um, you know, 
exchange contact info, or you can contact me and we'll, we'll try to get you your bottle and what you guys are going to select. But congratulations to Whiskey Nose. That's awesome. Look at the color in that port finish. Yeah. Here, here he goes. Look, check it out. That's how dark it is. Focus up. That is a nice color. Look at that, guys. That's uh, that's high def coming right at you, guys. <laughs> you want a sip? Would you like a sip? Yeah, you do. <laughs> uh, congrats, Whiskey Nose. Uh, that's awesome. All right, so pop him, don't watch him. I know my buddy's in the chat right now. Uh, pop him, don't watch him. If you could pick a number between 1 and 212, we'll see who's going to win your flight for the NOLA Bourbon Fest. This is awesome. Thrasher, I know I'm late, but I've been out to dinner with friends. Hopefully, it's been a good night. Absolutely, Thrasher. Thanks for hanging out. Looks like melted pennies in the glass. <laughs> Ricky Bobby has been nailing the chat tonight, too. I love it. R Ricky Bobby, Julie, uh, Hattori Hanzo. You guys have been killing the chat tonight. I love it. Uh, oh, Pop Em Don't Watch is going number nine for the retiring legend Drew Brees. That's right. Pop Em Don't Watch him. He is in the uh, – he lives in the, uh, the bayou down in New Orleans. So – but he's got some great killer bottles. He also has a cha uh, channel on YouTube. You know, check out Pop'em, don't watch him. He's really, you know, first of all, he's freaking jacked. You know, I've been working out lately too, trying to get the biceps up and going and working out a lot. Uh, but this dude is freaking, he's got it on point. So go check out Pop'em, don't watch him. Uh, hello, do some, hello, do all some bourbon taste caramel banana? and vanilla. Most of them do, uh, but different varietals of bourbons, depending on what distillery it is and what, what, uh, what area in the country they're getting them from. Uh, they can have a lot of different flavor profiles. Um, let's see here. Popping and watching number nine is Adam Dorman. Oh shit. Adam Dorman nails it. Who dat? Give him a who dat. Panthers fan here. Thank God Breeze is finally retiring. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like I'm, I'm actually an Atlanta Falcons fan and, uh, I've had enough of Bree, so, uh, I'm glad he's retiring. <laughs> Adam Dorman. Congrats, buddy. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, okay. Bree's gone. Brady next. F, <laughs> F them dirty birds. <laughs> I fucking love you guys. This is awesome. All right. So, uh, so Adam Dorman, uh, I guess, you know, if you want to hook up with, uh, you know, pop them, don't watch them. You guys can exchange contact info, uh, right now or email each other. Uh, thank you so much. Pop them, don't watch them for, you know, putting together that flight. That's a pretty unbelievable flight. Those NOLA picks are pretty legendary. So that's going to be a great flight for somebody. Uh, Drums and Jams, a Steelers fan. Oh, God. Falcons fan, unsubscribing. Just kidding. Yeah. Falcons fan in OSU, you wanting fields in the draft? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I, I, I became a Falcons fan strictly on Deion Sanders. That's I, – I grew up in a baseball household. Everybody was very pro-baseball. The only way I latched on to football was through like the superstars. We didn't really watch a lot of football growing up. Uh, so I latched on to Dion because I thought he was fucking amazing. And at the time he was on the Falcons. So I became a Falcon fan. That's just kind of how it went. Um, so yeah, Adam Dorman, there he is. Oh shit. <laughs> Adam, uh, contact, pop him, don't watch him and grab your, your, uh, grab your, grab your, uh, your, your flight. Neon Dion is the man. Yeah, he's the ultimate. I love Neon Dion. Jason C was too legit to quit. <laughs> I did. I had the baggy pants. Come on. Sad, sad Bengals fan here. Yep. Hey, uh, opening, was it? Is is opening day tomorrow for baseball? My New York Mets starting it up. I cannot wait. Yeah, Vic made me a fan, then he went to jail, asshole. Yeah, I was like a Vic, like crazed Vic fan. And then what happened happened. And I was like, 
I can't wear my Vic jersey anymore because I love animals. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, okay, so now we're going to get to the to the big kahuna here, guys. Uh, the Stag Junior Batch 15. Here it is. This is the uh, the big prize tonight, guys. Uh, I was lucky enough to get a few bottles of these this year. I'm going to give one away because I love you guys and – Everybody, somebody out there needs to try this bottle of Stag Junior Batch 15. So uh, I got to pick a number between 1 and 212. Uh, Whiskey Mountain says, fuck Vic, Pitbull owner here, hate him. Yeah, I I could see why, Adriana. Um, okay, here we go. Yeah, I've got a Vic jersey in the closet. Yeah, pretty much all my Vic jerseys I had stayed in the closet. I couldn't even wear them anymore. But, you know, all right, here we go. All right, between 1 and 212, what am I going to pick here? Should I pick a number myself or should I let Google do it? I'm going to let Google do it because that's a big that's a big variety of numbers here. And my favorite numbers are kind of on the low end, so I kind of want to keep it, you know, here we go. Pick a number between 1 and 212. One sixty four. One sixty four is the winner of the Stag Junior Batch Fifteen. My man Linux Cat. Who do we got? Who do we got? Yeah, I love pit bulls too. They're freaking adorable. Such a they have such a uh, a sweet disposition and a, such a bad reputation amongst a lot of people. Unfortunately, uh, get a Sanders twenty one jersey with a star on. I, I have a I have a Sanders jersey actually hanging up on my wall down here in my basement. Tony G says, hell yeah, it was 164. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> uh, mistake, screwed up math problem, drowned, strangled, fight dogs, and can stomach that. No, not a mistake. Terrible person shouldn't play again. No, unfortunately, he did. He played a lot. The Mash and Drum, Stag Junior Batch 15, number one. Whiskey Crusader Sarah? Are you serious? <laughs> what, what, what? What the what? Whiskey Crusader Sarah? Shit, says DC. Oh, my God. Congrats, Whiskey Crusader Sarah. Sarah, I don't... I mean, do you guys even see this shit in Texas? I mean, wow. If you haven't gotten this, then congratulations. Holy crap. Don't share it with Will. <laughs> Get that Sanders Yankees jersey. Nope. Nope. I won't. Nope. I can't. I won't wear. I don't. If Deion Sanders is even on a Yankees jersey, I can't. Nope. Uh, not uh, not in Texas. Oh, wow. Congrats, Sarah. That was amazing. Um, what does that say? I'm saying you should forgive and he paid his debt to society. Not that you should love him anymore, but teach his own. Yeah. I mean, he did pay his debt, and I get it. Um, and he was very misguided, you know, throughout his career, but you know, yeah, Sarah just came up, Sarah, holy shit. That's crazy. Congrats as Dan like hardly ever and nothing 15. So Sarah, not only do I want to, uh, see you enjoy this bottle and share it with, uh, with Will and, and uh, well, uh, apparently people don't want you to share it with Will. <laughs> But congratulations to Whiskey Crusader Sarah, who is one of the greatest people on earth, and uh, one of the, uh, you know, one of the 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 better whiskey tubers out there. Such great palates over there, Whiskey Crusaders. Congratulations, guys. Um, what can I say? This was fucking awesome tonight. Went through a lot of great whiskeys. Uh, tune in next week. We got a, a epic rye whiskey blind flight from the likes from Dan and Julie. Uh, and who knows what other shenanigans and what other giveaways we might have next week. So uh, what can I say? Right now, Stanley Wagner is going live at the Mashbill uh, on YouTube. So definitely go follow Stanley Wagner. Go check out the Mashbill right now, following this stream right now. Um, I can't say enough to thank you guys, the wrenches, for keeping track of the, uh, the chat. Thank you for everyone out there that supported the channel and uh, for all your super chats tonight. It was an amazing night. Uh, look out if you guys are thinking about becoming a Patreon and want to get your hands on one of that and that four gate pick that we got coming out soon and any other picks, 
Please think about becoming a Patreon, supporting the channel, and also becoming a part of the Mash and Journey Whiskey Club. Uh, my next review will be for that Chattanooga port cask finish, which is right here, which basically tastes like honey and toast with blackberry jam on it. It's fucking delicious. That'll be my next review coming at you soon. As I always say, it's not about the whiskey. It's the people you share with. So cheers. Congrats to all the winners tonight. And I'll see you next time on the Mash and Drum. Take care, everybody. Congrats.